we'll have some fun. Hey there, I'm Chef Dennis, and we're here today for a good day Google Plus, and it's my favorite day of the week because I get to hang out with my friends and talk to some other friends in the audience. So uh, we're going to have some fun today. I have a great group on, and we're going to talk to them and learn a little bit about them and what they do. And our topic for today was planning and marketing, and uh, it's uh, with with whatever we talk about in that area, we're probably going to hit on it. But marketing could be going to the market too, so uh, we might touch on that. <laughs> been doing some shopping in the market. That's my kind of marketing anyway. Uh, but let me introduce our panel real quick and then we will get moving on it. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments section and we will get to them. So I'd like to start. I'm going to start all the way on my far side and I have my friend Christine DeGraff. And it's been a while, Christine. Thanks for Hello. coming. Hello. Yes, it has. Although you were on uh, my show, the Music Hangout. And uh, the Christina Mia show, is that right? Yeah, that wasn't yeah. that long ago, I guess. But, but I guess it's been a while awesome. since I've been here. Yeah, so I'm glad to have you back on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And, of course, my friend Larry and uh, the Caribbean chef here. And uh, you're down in Trinidad and Tobago, and I, I don't see enough of you. I'm always happy to come on with you. Chef, it's always a pleasure. I've had you on a couple of my shows, and you've. this is my second time on on your show here. Yes, so it is. It's always a pleasure, sir. Always a pleasure. We, we have some fun around the uh, yes. plus uh, sphere, as we like to call it, and yeah. uh, with our other cooking friends, so it's always great to see you. Always. And uh, my first time here, I have Susan Finch, and Susan, so nice to have you in a hangout, and your bandwidth is spectacular. Your picture is just wonderful. Oh, thank you. I pay for it, though. <laughs> That's boost. <laughs> That's my boost. That's your boost. I do love it. So I'm very happy to be here, and I like talking about marketing and planning and planning to market and marketing your plan and <laughs> spinning planning to go to the market. The <laughs> yeah, I do need to. I'm really behind. Costco is calling. Uh -huh. I love that. Costco is too far away for me to use regularly. I, I like Costco, and I, I'm, I'm crazy. I have one for BJ's, I have one for Sam's Club, and I have the Costco too. So it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Sam's is the closest, so they get most of the action. But uh, the other two break up the monotony. So, all right, and then we have our first time here too, Yvonne. And how you doing, Yvonne? It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me, Chef Dennis. I'm doing great now that I'm halfway through my cup of coffee. I'm starting to finally wake up. Oh, now where are you at? I'm in California in the Sacramento area. Okay, so it's it's still relatively early for you. So I, I've already had three cups of coffee, and any more now would start to put me into overdrive. <laughs> yeah, we got it about 10 a.m. in the morning, which is about my 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. okay. It's because of working all night. I'm a late starter in the morning. Uh. I used to be a late night person, and as I got older, 10 o'clock starts calling me. And now, you know, I'd be up to 12 and 1 and then get up at 4 for work, and it never bothered me. Now that I'm retired, I want to sleep all the time. I don't understand it. So it's just. I've never been a morning person. In fact, this is early for me, and it's 1 o'clock. <laughs> I had to, like, set the alarm to make sure I didn't miss the show. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm glad to have you on. I know. There were mornings I would go to work, and I'd Come in at five, and you and Ronnie Benzer would still be on. So, uh, yep. <laughs> Ronnie ever slept. That was that was. With him. So uh, we're going to talk a little today, and uh, all we're going to do is we're going to talk about what we like, to do, what we do online, what we do offline, and any projects we're having. And the topic for today again was planning and marketing. And you know, although we may not think about it too much, we all plan, and we all market ourselves one way or the other. And it's it's. Uh, just natural for some of us. For others, it's a, it's a real struggle. Uh, but you know, it's something that we really need to do. And I think sometimes organically, not consciously, is the best way to do it. But really, you know, we need a plan. So I'm going to turn it right back over to Christine, and we're going to start with her because we're going right back down the line again. And let's talk a little about what you've been doing with some of your activities on and off the plus. Well, lately. Um I've been doing a lot of planning because we're getting ready to relaunch Circlescope. And, you know, I, I started realizing, I'm like, well, you know, we've, we've been doing a lot of work leading up to it. We've been doing beta testing. We're working on, you know, a new logo, a website, a blog, videos, all kinds of things. But, um, you know, I wanted to get a, a launch plan for when we're going to launch the new product. 
so I could schedule some, you know, appearances on HOAs. And so I started um, reaching out to some hosts, and I said, you know, I'm thinking about launching in like two weeks. Can you schedule me? And they're like, hey, we've had our schedule set for like six, you know, we, we're booked all summer now. Like, well, <laughs> what are you doing reaching out to us in two weeks? You know, you want to be on our HOA. So, um, you know, so there is some definite um, planning. I said, hey, to my team, I said, hey, we need to back up the date a little bit. But we need to set a date so that I can go ahead and book some of these shows because, you know, other people's schedule is depending on this. And, um, you know, I can't just, you know, we need to we need to plan this a little bit. Well, you know, Christine, I think, I, I know I would be happy to have you guys on any time to talk. Oh, about thank you. And, you know, if hosts don't see the value of what you're doing and make room for you when you're ready, shame on them. Well, actually, and I have to say that um, two two hosts actually um, are doing a special for for me, um, um, Jason Weiser and uh, Wade Harmon. You know, because they said because Wade told me he's like Christina booked up for like you know well into July, and he says how about a special, and I'm like that'll work. Well, so, I was just going to offer you the same thing. You know, if you guys want to do a special, I would be happy to do it on a time when we could really push it out and promote it. And I bet a lot of people would jump on that with us and help do it. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I, I'm really excited about this. I mean, I I think that um, you know, the one thing that's going to be great is it is we're going to have a free version, so everybody's going to be able to use the full functionality. You know, it just we're just um. You know, making some minor changes, um, you can't add in bulk or remove in bulk. But, you know, everybody's going to be able to benefit from using it. Um, I think uh, a couple people I know that are in our beta test, they they were, like, blown away when they realized that they had, like, 2,000 people not following them back. Or, <laughs> you know, or, like, 1,000 people that haven't posted in six months. And you're just, you know, ghosts. And... You know, so I think that it's, so I'm really excited about it. It I can be an eye-opener for those that have never used it. You know, uh, the, the people are not following them or people are, are gone completely. Uh, yes. It's, it's a great tool. You know, I'm really, I use it every day. And, uh, and you software. haven't even tried the new one yet, so we'll get you in that. I need to get you in that beta test, Chef. Yeah, I, I am signed up for it, but I'm one of these dinosaurs, and I have troubles learning anything on my own. I need someone to hold my hand and walk me through it. And I'll, I'll hold your hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I'm working on is a music hangout um, with uh, Dennis Deuce. Uh, we're doing a weekly show. Every other week now as a band, and the in-between weeks, we're going to do a talk show. And that's kind of my passion, and... Um, you know, there's a lot of planning involved in that as well, and a lot of you know marketing and trying to get people get people's attention without you know making their notifications go crazy, and you know there's like that fine line to walk. I know, I hear you on that. I have backed off inviting people to a lot of things because I just felt like I was driving people crazy with notifications. So, yeah. All Not right. Really. Uh, absolutely. Let's turn to Larry. And Larry, you know, you had said earlier in the green room that you didn't think you had any branding or marketing to share, but I mean, you are you are Larry Fournier, and you are <laughs> the superstar chef of Google+. Plus. Well, chef, I, I honestly, when when you sent me the invite and you said, you asked me if I was going to come on, I said, sure, I'd love to be on the show because, I've, like I said, I've been on before. And when I read what the description of what the content of the, of the show was going to be, I said, well, wait a minute. I'm a I'm a lousy planner, and <laughs> marketing is not, you know. <laughs> but then when I came into the green room, you said, hey, who are better? Who's a better marketer than you? Look at, you know, Larry Finelli here. So coming to to, to look at it from that angle, I would say um, yes. I don't have a a, a a website, but I I do blog. With, with the videos, with the cooking shows. So I guess that in itself could, could be tagged as a um, as a form of marketing, I guess. Sure. Um, you have to so, plan every show as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I do have to plan every show. <laughs> but but lately, it, it has been getting kind of crazy. Um, because when I first came on the platform, I was about um, not 
only promoting myself, but promoting other people. And I have stuck with that even up to today because, um, you know, folks like uh, uh, Serena Bland, uh, Stacey Fraser, Daniel Fontaine, uh, those are people back in 2012, 2013, whom I um, built cooking shows around for them and, you know, pushed them out there so folks could see who, who, who they are. And now we have um, Maggie and Zweta, who, who Chef is going to be working with. <laughs> coming on next week. Right. And Aslin Blow in the UK, she um, she's now doing her own cooking show. Uh, savory, savory cooking, and she's doing uh, Simply Singapore on the Larry Live channel, which is a, I guess, a new branding for me. <laughs> yeah. Mm, some marketing in there. All right. Yeah, yeah, a new, a new marketing uh, uh, a twist. So yeah, um, so to answer your question, yes, I, I guess I feel comfortable now being on this. Well, show. Let's not forget the Pirates <laughs> Pub too. Carmen Mandich just made a comment about the Caribbean pirate who does yeah. a, a bit of everything oh so well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Pirates Pub. I for, I completely forgot about that. That's why that 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 um my uh, logo, not well, not my logo, my um profile pic, mm -hmm. you know, is from the Pirates Pub days. Which chef you you're familiar with? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 We had music on there. We had food. We had um, cocktails. So it was it was like what food and booze is. Yes. But with a, a crazy pirate theme and music and just. Fun. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that, with the pirate theme. I'm s yeah. <laughs> I tried to get Mia to come on with a parrot on her shoulder. She just wouldn't do it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and I don't believe that, Chef. I think she would do it. I think she would, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to ask her. Well, Stacey, so we all do have something, and you have offered us a lot, and you've really given us. And you've, you've spring boarded the careers of a lot of people on Google Plus, so you know that is a lot of marketing and planning. Maybe not conscious planning. Yeah, that, well, I, I guess I guess you're right. Um, um, but, like, but like I said, I, I like to to give, so I'm always giving. Yeah. And um, I'm still giving. <laughs> well, I hope you keep giving. <laughs> so <laughs> it benefits all of us. All right, so let me turn it over to Susan. And Susan, let's talk about what you've been doing. I know you were just on my sister Mia's show, and uh, yes. or as Thelma, as I like to call her. <laughs> I'm not Louise. <laughs> I'm Louise. Yeah, Louise. <laughs> we were talking about graphics there, but I'm I'm busy putting planning. I love what Christine. I love what you said about realizing if you couldn't launch it the way you wanted to with the with the press tour, basically is what you're saying. Right. You hold it back, and that was really smart. And so, Chef, I talked to you about my project, and Evie knows about it, mm -hmm. um, my art project mm -hmm. that's going to involve art history, teaching kids art, um, HOAs where they can learn how to cook at kid level that goes with the art theme, do virtual field trips, and I'm putting together this whole package, but I'm finding I have to plan <laughs> and do my due diligence, but I'm very excited about that as, you know, it, it, that's happening while I'm still working for all my clients and doing their fun things, so... I'm busy. Well, that's good. And you're up in New Hampshire? No, actually, I'm in Oregon. Oregon. Oh, that's right. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in Beaverton, Oregon, which is across the street is Portland. So wow. basically I'm in Portland. That's right. What was that? I was just talking to someone from Portland, too. That wasn't you. I, I My mind is like a blank now, wasn't it? I'm trying to remember who it was now, but we were talking about Portlandia. Oh, yeah. The, the, first, the first season was good. <laughs> I haven't seen any of it, so I'm, I'm novice. I'm, I'm waiting for The Walking Dead to return. So Yeah, so am I. Yeah. Yep, and definitely. I've been watching 24's come back. Oh, yeah. I love that show. Yeah, yeah. I was a big Jack Bauer fan. So. Yeah, Jack, Jack is in London this, this time around. Yeah. My, one of my man. favorite sayings was always one of the shows he did, he was interrogating someone, and he turned to the, the woman and said, get me a lamp. And pull the cord off the end and plug it in, and then we're shocking them. Together. So I'll say that from time to time. I'll go, get me a lamp. <laughs> well, it's better than, look at the flowers, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, much better. Well, anyway, thank you for being on. And we're going to talk some more about marketing and planning, and they're just what we're doing. And now I'm going to turn it over to Yvonne. And is it Yvonne, or is it you have your ask? And I, is it what? 
It's Ask Evie and it's Yvonne. It's kind of like E V O N. Okay, Yvonne. I say so. so Evie. Oh, getting a Starbucks coffee is always fun. It's from Evan to whatever. It's like, yeah, which one is it? Yeah, that's mine. Well, so, I like to have fun with Starbucks when I go in there. Every time I go in, I give them a different name. What? And who's this for? <laughs> Demetrius. Who's this for? <laughs> See, I don't need to give them a different name each single time. I'm getting a different name each single time. <laughs> so, yeah, it keeps it interesting. What, uh, what you're doing. I'm actually um, working on three projects right now. I'm involved with Susan trying to help on her project, get, getting that going. Um, I actually just last week got asked by our Mark HOA Seidel to partner up with him on his HOAshows.com, helping him on the technical side, making it easy for visitors, making it easy for him, speeding up the site so we don't have to wait five minutes to see what's going on, Ooh. these things. And Christine, we got to talk because I'm actually working on putting together a new show and I need to get that out there and your timing issue is, I think, mine right now. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm putting a few things together on taking what I learned throughout the last five years and fast and quick and giving that information to people. Um, then yeah, we'll we'll see. It's it's a new layout. I'm trying to change things up a little bit, as we all always try to do. So let's see how that works. And I'm going to pick your brain on how to get that out there. All right, sounds good. Hey, it's good to have friends that we can call on. I'm telling you. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I see. I see. Lainey's in the audience, and yes, she definitely she made room for me right away. That was awesome of her. And um. Well, I'm yeah, telling you, like I said, hot. anybody that didn't offer to do something for me, <laughs> they so. Yeah, until you mentioned it, Christine, I didn't even think about the whole getting it out there. I'm like, I've been so caught up in all the technical and all of right, that. Right, yep. Maybe yeah, you yeah. yeah, you definitely need a launch plan with, with, with bigger projects, I think. You know, especially if you, you want to come out of the gate, you know, as strong as possible. Um, so it definitely, definitely requires, you know, not only planning your time, but planning other people's time and efforts around it. Yeah. So. And thanks to having you, having Lainey, having Mark, and having Susan, and all the other people in my corner. And right now I'm looking at, in July, till I got all of my kinks worked out, so we have a little bit of time. It goes faster than you think, though. <laughs> yeah. I still don't know how Susan does it every single day. It looks like she found a trick to actually extend the 24 hours in a day because every time I talk with Susan, she's up to something. I have no idea how you do that. Well, I didn't even tell you. Um, Stefan and I, um, Hovnanian, we put together a series too. We're doing a five show, six show series we just made up called If I Had a Nickel. So, yeah, yeah, I saw that yesterday. And I was like, <laughs> How cool is that? What's that about? Basic, yeah. It's kind of our rants that, you know, it's like when we get so sad, the first one is about when people want to switch who their website host is or their website master, webmaster, and what they should do before they make that transition. And if it's too late and they've already started the ball rolling, how we can help them. So mm -hmm. that's one of them. Another is detangling Google when you have too many profiles and too many channels and everything's not jiving. And then there was another one. I mean, we have six of them. They, they just keep coming up in our head. Mm -hmm. One is about photography, and you'll see it. Sounds good. Out there. So, yeah, yeah. Sounds and interesting. We, and we're bringing in people like uh, Mayanna Stevenson and some other, you know, experts that they're really, you know, Stefan and I are actually competitors, technically, but, but we're not. We find that we're very aligned in everything that we do. And how and our philosophies. So we're really excited about these shows, and we're going to convert them then into podcasts to go on iTunes. Awesome! That's, that's great. Isn't it? Isn't it great to collaborate? It is. It's. The, I think it's my favorite gift from Google Plus. Mm -hmm. I came here thinking, oh, I'm going to get more exposure and stuff. I never counted on this part of it, and it is the most beautiful mm -hmm. gift. Mm -hmm. And we get to know each other without connecting yet to say that might be a good match for me or no way am I doing anything with that person 
and I I love that vetting process, and then I love coming together and just the the ideas just spew out of us, and it's yeah. so much fun. It's like a volcano. Yeah. It, it's it's great. It's, it's it's great for collaboration. Definitely. David Amerland had made a point. Uh, was, uh, it's been a couple months now, and he uh, posted something about how your competitor can be your best friend if you only let them because you work in the same field, you do the same kind of thing, and really there's room enough for all of us, and, you know, unless you know, it's, we're talking to Dodge or something, but you know, it's, uh, for the most part, if we just talk to our competitors, we find we have so much in common that you know, it is a pretty good friendship and a pretty good working arrangement there. And, and, and don't be afraid to share. Exactly. And the client decides whom they want to go with. I'm like, some want to work with Susan, some want to work with Stefan, some want to work with a woman, some want to work with a guy, some can like my accent, some can't stand it. The client decides who they're going to work with. It's no matter what you offer, you can't bind them to you. And and once you once you bring that synergy together, I mean, you you have talent, Stefan has talent, and you combine forces, you could be a force to be reckoned with. Yep. Yeah. You can still do business together and still do business apart. Right. And you're getting the best of both worlds. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I mean, well, look at you and Chef. I mean, it's the same thing. Yes, you both have cooking shows, and there's a whole yeah. network of you now. And a and exactly, exactly. And, and, and you know, we, we help each other. I would share yeah. his stuff. He would share mine. I come on his show. He comes on mine. So everybody's happy. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm all remember to build for it. <laughs> <laughs> and there is, you know, variety is so important. I mean, can you imagine if, you know, if you turned on the TV and there was only one cooking show and it was that was right. the only person you got to learn to cook from. Exactly. You know, the only food you got to, you know, to make. Right. I mean, it's the same thing here, you know. It's it's there's there's a lot of views and there's a lot of styles and there's mm -hmm. just, you know, there's a lot of room for, and collaborating, you know, really can help. And Google gives us the tools with the Google Drive and, you know, with uh, Hangouts and um, really can easily work together. Yeah, and, and, and like Chris Bergen said it best. He said, Google gives us a blank canvas and it's up to us to paint what we want to paint. Absolutely. And, and share that. You know, so... I, I, I love the platform. So yeah. yeah, and I all these naysayers saying that it's a ghost town still and that it's going away. Well, you know, we we never have we don't know what Google's gonna do and you know, things change for them as quickly as anybody else and uh, they may change the platform, but I, I can't see HOAs ever going away. This is definitely here to stay. And, and even if it did, I mean you adapt. It's just you know like I, I think that people, I mean, imagine if, you know, let's just say an actress or actor said, oh, I'm not going to get involved with this movie stuff. I don't think it's going to stick around or this TV stuff or, you know, it's like, okay, so, um, you know, if one thing evolves to the next thing, you know, um, trying to think of a good example, then the music industry, you know, you used to have the eight tracks and then you have the cassettes and, you know, you still have music. It's just you're purchasing it or listening to it in different forms, but it's not going away. And um, you know, you're, we're we're still going to have, you know, we're going to we're now social creatures. And if even if for some reason we didn't have this platform, we would find another and we would make it work. Oh yeah. I think it's the people. It's the people more than anything. And you know, yes, mm -hmm. some platforms are better than others at encouraging dialogue or, you know, or um, at providing us with better tools to work together, you know, but I think it's the people that make it happen. Yeah. My mentor, um, Linda Zimmer, she refers to herself as a liquid being. And I, I love that thought because that if we will all just die, like some people have because they refuse to adapt, evolve, adapt mm -hmm consider. I mean, am I the only one that thinks that this and television are all starting to kind of conglomerate mm -hmm. together? And I think we're all on the cusp of this right now. Yeah. And I think we're all starting to dip our toes in there in that consideration. But if we aren't willing to, let's consider it, we will become irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. 
you mm -hmm. have to be able to change with what's going on or everything just passes you by. And, you know, I, I think TV is going to be the biggest change that's coming to us, especially with all these different types of uh, ways that we can see stuff on TV, you know, like the Chromecast, Amazon's Fire they just put out, uh, and um, just different, more elements are going to come into play that people are going to go away because I watch TV and I flip through channels just to get away from the commercials because that's all you see. Yeah. Well, they just did a study, Chef, and um, between the ages of 14 and 20 or 21, their their form of entertainment now is YouTube. Yeah. And it's through devices, through tablets, phones, and computers. They're not sitting in front of the television as they used to anymore. Anyway. And with because you're talking about TV, we have done the switch from regular broadcast to internet TV. We don't have any cable anymore. And we have gone through this learning curve of what can I actually watch? Because there are some shows, and Susan is laughing. She probably saw my TiVo post. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up finding that some shows that my husband is watching on Comedy Central, they are moving from their regular show that they have on TV also to extras that you just can see on their website. So they are starting mm -hmm. to do that integration. On the other hand, MSNBC is boxing it completely in. You cannot watch MSNBC shows anymore online. You have to either way log in your broadcast, your, your way, if you're direct TV, whatever it is, to see these shows. And I think they are just locking out more viewers that they could have, where they could add more advertising to it. So. I don't. I don't think regular TV is gonna be around for another ten years. It's gonna have to change. People are, as Larry said, mobile. It's you are out and about. You're waiting for your car to get smart. What am I doing? Okay, I don't have a book with me. I turn on my phone and I watch what I was going to watch in an hour. So yeah, I agree with that. They're gonna have to change just because how we view content is changing. The game show, our Friday night game shows that we some of us check in and watch, our word show. I was laughing so hard at my desk. My family was annoyed because they're watching something really bad on television. And it's the next time you're just going to watch it with me. And we're all going to play along. Everybody has a device. Let's just do it. And they said, let's. You know, it's an interactive thing. And I think that's what's going to start happening more is more true interaction. We all talk about talking to the television. That's what we can do here. But we really will be able to and it does need to merge. I'm very excited to be part of this piece of it because we're ahead. And I mean we're already seeing it happen, you know. I mean if you watch Dr. Phil, they go to their live Twitter feed and right. You know, I mean I don't know, you know, when they're taping and how they make that work, but it seems like it, it's, you know, all relative and timely and um, you know, so it's really is um, you know, I I also noticed that they're um, I, I watch a lot of Dr. Phil, mm. but uh, <laughs> you know they kind of almost have it like the the Hangout app. You know they they do video calls with people, you know, um, with their WebMD thing and stuff like that. And you know they they've got a lot of stuff going on. Do, do you guys watch um, Chris Hardwick on Comedy Central at midnight? No, oh, I don't think I knew about him. Yeah, well, uh, he he is the only one I think that's bringing social media into television and having interaction with them out there in that television space through Twitter. And he, his show is very popular. I, I think, no, is he on, no, I think he's on Sci-Fi or Comedy Central, one of those. But uh, at midnight, if you get a chance to, to watch Chris Hardwick, he, he does the Talking Dead um, after... Oh, yeah. Right, he's the one who does that, but he has his own um, uh, thing on uh, uh, Comedy Central uh, at midnight. Watch it. it you know, it's, it's interesting to see how television is now shifting. They, they're seeing that they're losing audience, so they're trying to get them now by bringing them in from social media by any means necessary. And I think his show is one of the first shows I see where they're doing it well. Well, look how, how mm. great all the people in our audiences for our shows feel the people that are making the comments, when you acknowledge them, when you bring the importance of their questions, their comments, you say hello, 
it's that type of thing and it's that engagement it, they yeah. everybody's included I love it I'd like to interact and I like to interact afterward as well the afterlife of the shows but I think he's smart then if that's what he's doing yeah he's, yeah he's uh, because live audience. And, and we're doing it right here with with the hangout I mean mm -hmm. we we have comments coming up on on the stream uh, and Mia Voss said ha 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 I just heard Larry's rooster in the background <laughs> you know, another thing is, uh, like, I I will, during a show that I'm watching, like Dr. Phil or, you know, um, mm -hmm. Breaking Bad, you know, I'll follow the hashtag mm -hmm. and, you know, be talking to people during the commercials, you know. Right. Like, I, can't, I can't believe they did that, you know. Oh, my gosh, you know, and it, it really adds a yeah. lot of fun to it. You're becoming part of it. I'm like, no matter how big or small our own ego is, it's always nice to see your own name on TV. And Mark just said it in big capital letters, we are the new TV. And I agree, that's where it's going. It's interactive. I'm like remembering being a kid and watching any of the gaming shows, like Susan just mentioned, I was like, oh, I want to go there, I want to go there. Now we have the chance to be part of it without having to write that long letter and hoping the station goes back to you and then they don't like your face or they don't like that and you're never going to get on the show. This, you can literally just jump in. Or you could just create your own. <laughs> like like we're doing, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here's a, a comment from Kristen Drysdale. Totally the new TV, Mark. HOA Seidel, your HOA site reminds me of the TV Guide with all its listings. Absolutely. And yeah. who still remembers Ooh, TV Guide? Yeah, yeah. Ma Ma and Mark Seidel is doing a fantastic job. Yes. He's Absolutely. doing a remarkable job. Especially with the new feature you added with the archiving, where you can yes. watch shows that you've been on. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. amount that's... of hours that must have been into that. Yeah, that's oh, brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. No, he's gonna have to up his ad rates because <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's su it's such a wonderful service, and I don't think he realized how big that was going to get. But what a gift he's giving to all of us that work hard on our shows. I mean, allowing us to even fill out a form, submit it, and there it goes. Yeah. As long as it's a true HOA, not just a promo video or something. But I love it because then I can quickly go back. I can't go through Google Plus yet. It's not quite organized as well as Mark's site. And to go back and look through those archives, it's fun. Mm -hmm. And I think oh, in, the, in, in the early, somebody tried that uh, in 2012. Remember Chef When Hangouts first yeah. came out? Uh, they had a, a, a calendar of sorts, and it, it was very rudimentary. It was a lot of work. You had to put in a lot of time, and, and each individual uh, host had to pretty much feed that calendar with, with, with right. their data. Um, but uh, what Mark is doing now, it, it's taken that and taken it up to the next level, and uh, I, I say he's doing a great job. And my it's, hat's it's off. It's fun to watch him because he started out, oh yeah, trying to put it together, and I'm like, why don't you use Pinterest? That's where he started out, and then he looks at the, he looks at the maximum you can do on Pinterest. He's like, yeah, now I'm gonna fill that up in the next week. <laughs> and we all know Mark, if he does something, he really wants to do it perfect. Yeah. He wants yeah. to do it easily reachable, easy understandable, and just simple. So yeah, watching him go through that and spend 20, 22 hours a, a, on some certain days and getting the archive together. <laughs> uh, again, it comes right back to, to sharing and caring. Sharing is caring, caring is sharing. And planning. Yeah. Yeah. And planning, yes, exactly. And <laughs> marketing. Mark. <laughs> yeah. And marketing, yeah, yeah. So, hey, Mark should be on the show. <laughs> we'll have to get him back on again. He was on once. We'll have to get him back on. Here's a comment from Mia. We're going back to the rooster. Delilah, tell her you know it, girl, because Delilah mentioned about how Mia loves her rooster and she hashtag 47 pound rooster. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> And uh, here's uh, Christopher Vogelman. Chris Hardwick does a great hosting job, Mia, but your Miara has lots of cash. <laughs> Lainey <laughs> Sullivan, uh, Mark, are you blushing yet? <laughs> yeah, his hat probably looks pretty similar to a tomato right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so I mean, well, there are. You know, Marcus was there in the beginning for us before we really realized we needed him, and he developed this calendar and the, you know way of doing things, and he's just been at it and at it quietly in the background, and he just, you know, he's just helping everybody with that. So you know, hats off to Mark for that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, let's see if we have any other... Oh, here's a, another comment from Christopher Vogelman. Breaking Dr. Phil, Christine. <laughs> I like that one. I have a love-hate relationship with Dr. Phil. It depends on the day, and sometimes my hashtags are like, I cannot believe this, you know, and other times it's like, right on, Dr. Phil. <laughs> well, I love his Dr. Phil-isms, you know. Uh, <laughs> My, my favorite one was in a comedy routine that he had done. It was, it, you might be peeing on my leg, but that doesn't mean it's raining outside. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, but, uh, we, we have a good time watching Dr. Phil. I would never, ever, that's one of the shows, if they invited me on, never. No. Just because I would be afraid. Just like Oprah, I would be afraid that she was. She would say, now, Dennis, when you were in third grade. <laughs> grade. <laughs> The but she'd have no problem going on the Ellen show, right? Oh, no, no, I love, oh, Ellen. love Ellen. <laughs> Ellen is my fave. Ellen and uh, or, or even Jimmy Kimmel, I would I wouldn't mind being home with him. <laughs> He's kind of funny. Ellen's such a love. Just but, yeah, no, I, I like to entertain. You know, I was watching. Who was it? It was uh, Jay Leno, and I, I was never a big Jay Leno fan. But someone was asking him about how when he was getting all bashed about losing this job and, and coming back on, and they said, why didn't you ever fight back? He says, people don't want to hear that. He goes, well, they all have problems. They don't watch us to listen about to our problems. They watch us to be entertained. And well, that's not entirely true. I mean, I think Jerry Springer and all of them have made a whole industry out of listening to other people's problems. But we know none of those problems are real. <laughs> Or if they are, I don't know where that trailer park is. There's a difference between exploiting and exploiting. I like that, Sam. You don't know where that trailer park is. But I don't want to know where that trailer park is. But, you know, people want to be entertained. And, you know, I think we bring a lot of entertainment to them. Uh, you know, it's, it's not serious. I, I was having a conversation with my friends the other day. And he said, you know, everybody's saying that you have to be authentic on Google+. Plus. He goes, but it's not authentic. You never talk about, you know, what you're going through or what's bothering you or why you don't like something. He goes, well, people don't want to hear that. That's yeah. not what we're here for. I think people mistake authentic with speaking every single thought that comes to your mind. You know, um, you, know you can be authentic but still, you know, have manners and, you know, learn when to check yourself. And, you know, I, I think that a lot of people don't get that. They think authentic means you just come out cussing, you know, right. you bash yeah. people, yeah. you know, you be your real self. But, you know, a lot of us um, aren't like that, <laughs> or, we are, or we are not like that publicly, at least, because that's not really presenting a very, um, you know, social image. And, you know, I kind of think it's like if you wouldn't say it in front of your grandmother, maybe... Keep it, keep it to yourself. You Unless know. it's hard of hearing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you don't want to bring my grandmother in the stream. She's <laughs> but I, Christine, you're you're right. It's that filtering. We still need to filter, and we mm -hmm. can still be our authentic selves. If I pretend to be somebody else, that's not authentic. But I'm not going to tell you that I was fighting with my kids last night, and I couldn't get my son to put on socks that didn't match today. Right. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. Yeah, or, or exactly. if they do, they want to bask in your misery. It's just not my target audience. Now, do you think we're going to see some kind of Jerry Springer type show yeah. come up on HOAs? Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. <laughs> you, think, you, guys, you guys really think so? And we'd watch we it too. We just, oh, like, I don't know. I don't think I would because those depress me. I really, I enjoy yeah. That's one of the things I feel like, you know, Larry, we were talking earlier about that 60s recap. On, right, yeah, on, uh -huh. CNN. on CNN. I mean, think about it. Think about Gilligan's Island, Mayberry, and all of those. You felt good. You had hope for humanity, hope for your neighborhood, hope for your own family. It gave you something positive. And that, I find Mayberry here. This is how it feels to me on Google+. Plus. It's how it feels in my neighborhood. I moved up here from California to have Leave it to Beaver and, and Mayberry turn my kids loose and have fun without worrying and I leave here so uplifted it's almost addicting 
you know, I, it's like, oh, I got to go make money. But I'm listening, and I feel, oh, ho, ho, and I'm laughing, having a great time. I love listening to all of you guys. You know, this panel, the show I was on with Mia, it's the most upbeat, free knowledge sharing, caring, collaborative, beautiful group. We're so blessed. Absolutely. Yeah. But Susan, when you when you look, I agree with you. I have through the last year made the decision from watching drama to watching easy food uplifting because I recognized in myself how it changed me and my relationships. Definitely. Do I have Larry has it up? Um, it's Larry's but winner. it will come. I'm like, look how much people, how many people watch drama shows? How many drama shows are out there? I don't think it's gonna go away. So I think it's also gonna swap into here. But we just gotta make our own decisions. Do you want that drama because it's gonna swap into your life too, or do you make the conscious decision of watching easy food that's actually uplifting and helping you? Right. Well. Again, um, you guys say Springer might come to HOAs or Springer type might come to, and that might be true because um, what I said earlier that you know Google give you a, a, a blank canvas and you could paint whatever you want on it. Uh, the same thing with with, uh, with with Hangouts, you could broadcast whatever you want through here. So yeah, it it. We might get Springer type uh, shows, so I think I will have to retract what I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a way to get more Facebook people over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's Sheila. Said, <laughs> Sheila really nailed it. Yes, some people have not learned that being authentic has boundaries. And yeah, I, I definitely Good think point. that. Yeah, you still need to just. You still need filters. You still need boundaries. You still need. You know, you still need to remember that you can't just blur out everything you ever think in your life. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you could be hanging with your friends, hanging with us now, and, you know, you might say a little expletive or something, but you wouldn't say that in front of your, your mother. Yeah. You know? But you're, you're still being authentic, but you're showing that level of respect and that, that context yes. that you're and, in. And professionalism. You know, you, you yeah. might... You know, authentic, but being professional. You know, and um, knowing that you know you just, you know, you don't you're not going to post that picture of you out. You know, having one too many drinks or something like that. You know, right. like that's not yeah. good for your professional image. Yeah. So. Unless, of course, you're on the food and booze show. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly, so exactly, totally exactly. Different. Oh, oh, if you're the food. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I love watching that because at the end, Mia does look just a little flushed. And it's just adorable. Hey, hey <laughs> chef. Room afterwards, and Mia's nose was a little red. So. <laughs> chef, chef I, I think you're paying back Mia now because you are now being hosted and 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 wined and dined. <laughs> well, I'm still trying to find restaurants in my area. These people, well, I don't have the contacts Mia does because she's been there a long time. I've only been in Orlando a short time, so. People are still looking at me a little bit like I'm crazy sometimes, which this is true, but still. You know. It was awesome on, on the show. Yes, the show yesterday. Mia ate something really hot, <laughs> and I mean, she was like trying to play it off, and she was like, "This is so hot, I'm dying." It was funny. <laughs> I don't do hot well either, so I, I would be in there with her. Uh, uh, Susan, I think I think uh, somebody just gave us a compliment. Yes, they did. <laughs> yes, I was we. I was very we in the sixties. Oh, nice. I was there. Yeah, no and then we had, and that, But that was syndication in, in the seventies, so that worked out really well for us. Well, yeah. Well, I, I, I remember those shows vividly in the sixties because, I mean, truth be told, truth be told, I am fifty-six, so you know. <laughs> so you were just a we one then, but you were Larry live then too. Yeah, I was yeah I'm, I'm 49. I'll be 49 next month. Oh, God. I know. I'll be 61 this year. Oh, Lord. 45. <laughs> and, but look at you, Chef. I mean, yeah, Chef, you look good. I, it's, well, it isn't even looking good. Look at what you're creating. And yeah. I hear too many people, once they even get past their 50s, oh, I'm too old to learn that. So I, I just want to slap them. Slap like, them, right. You are, you are such a loser. Go, go dig your grave then. Because, well, I mean, I like that. <laughs> Put that on a T-shirt. 
Yep. <laughs> I don't want to. I like that. that. I like that. I like that. Well, my favorite thing was I was working at a summer camp, and I had this one uh, camper that would stay around me all the time. We were talking, and I said one day, it wasn't like the old days. And he says, when were the old days? And I said, the 60s. And he looked at me and went, I read about those. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lord. Uh. Well, my poor family is so subjected because my parents were older. So I was raised with very old movies, all the musicals, all the screwball comedies from the 40s and the 30s. And so a lot of the things I say are kind of obsolete <laughs> and, you know, old sayings. And they just crack up. And then they'll repeat it, though, at school. And people look at them like they're from the moon <laughs> because oh, wow. I'm speaking, you know, like the little rascals. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> little rascals. Little rascals, yeah. Yeah. There were some good shows on back then. Some of them were really corny, and the, and the one thing was that they made you believe that men and women never slept together in the same bed because all the shows they always had twin beds. Except the Brady Bunch, they really pushed the envelope. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, to be divorced and remarried and oh, sleep no, in the same widow. bed. No one widower. We had, no. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're right. You're right. Made oh, it okay. <laughs> oh, they were both widowers. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Have that's convenient. right. Have <laughs> but they didn't have Match.com. I wonder how they found each other. Well, maybe at a grocery uh, store. Living in Florida has been quite an experience, and there are some things here that yes, we don't see up north, and I wasn't used to. One of them was when we first moved here. There is a Match.com, but it's for ranchers down here. And it's got the cows talking. Do you think Susan will ever find someone? Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> a whole new world. I'm telling you, it's a whole new world. Well, there's a Match.com for um, that's you know they they put it on TV. It's not Match, but it's like position for people in their elder years. Careful, Christine. I know because yeah. it said it is said it's 50 plus. plus, and I'm like, holy crap, I'm almost there. <laughs> you know, like it's crazy. Elder. Oh my but god. But that's how they position it. It's like you know you yeah. find your like your person for the, you know, the last part of your life or whatever. And I'm like, wait a minute. And then they said 50 plus. I'm like, are you kidding? Let's let's move that up a little. You know? Yeah, like, like that's, that's when you start getting your ARP newsletters, Christine. <laughs> yeah. Just want you to know that. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I mean, I'm 45, and it's it's I'm I'm like thinking, you know, I can move to a 50 and over community soon. That's that's freaking me out. <laughs> it really is. I'm telling you, that's where we live, and it's great because there's no kids running around screaming. Here's Mark. <laughs> Yvonne Hyman is like. Yow's is old. <laughs> I have to admit, I'm feeling like the baby over here. I'm just you lucky are. enough that TV swapped into East Germany late, so I at least can halfway follow up with the show. How old are you? How old are you, Evie? Wait a second, in 2014, I'm going to turn 32. Yeah, you're a baby. Yeah. I've got clothing older than that. I <laughs> 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 Hey, but therefore I got an old husband, so I can follow up. And that's an old dear husband. I got an old husband. Is he, is he as old as us? <laughs> um, he went to all this pee, near mid fifties. So I'm uh, always this, 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 without this, this, having to be over fifty. We'll be Yvonne, ready. The adult diapers pretty soon. Oh my. <laughs> Yvonne, Yvonne, he's mature. He's mature. He's yes. mature. He's a mature <laughs> guy. <laughs> I'm working I saw on it, but looking at American guys my age in Germany we say they're still green behind their ears. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> <That's gross. laughs> they're not quite grown out yet. No. <laughs> I have um I you know I train the seniors, I was saying that. That's a Laguna Woods village. There are eighteen thousand seniors living in this one community and two hundred clubs and buses and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But I have Sun City and my client contacts, so it's a riot. They're all old ad guys, and sorry guys if you're watching this, um, old because I knew them when I was in the ad business 25 years ago, and they were the heads of the agencies, and so oh, now wow. they're on the marketing committee there, and it's an interesting thing, to, and I'm grateful that, that I had that experience with them because I can communicate with them still, and you know, the planning, the whole thing with them has been a riot. 
I mean, I'm I'm more comfortable there than I am a lot of times working, you know, no offense, Evie, but working with the people that are that much younger than me because it the sub-references. Right. I love that connection. I'd be able to just click and say a couple words and they get it. It's fun. And it's it's weird seeing it out of out of my situation because growing up in Germany, as I mentioned, things swapped over late. Then with my parents, the music, I I listened to my husband's music, which is not necessarily what my age group listens to. I am getting halfway of the references, so it's weird because trying to talk with people that I connect in my age in the States, it's like, you know, we don't really have much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, it is tough. Yeah. But I've, I don't know how many siblings all of you have, but mine are all so much older than I am. And my parents are older. I've never been comfortable with people my own age. You know, it's rare. I'm finding it here because everybody's catching up now. It's a strange thing. But my husband's older. You know, my first husband was older. Um, he's my last husband, though, down the hall. <laughs> Your last one? I'm never, I'm never breaking it. The current one. <laughs> I will never break it under one. It's too hard. <laughs> too hard. Too much to catch them up on. <laughs> yeah, no, but it is where I'm comfortable. And plus, then you have to go through all that planning and marketing to find another <laughs> husband. You know, like, I'm glad I'm done with that, you know. And yeah, like, I'm glad I'm done with that, too. <laughs> I'm marketing I, yourself, you know, yeah, yeah. trying to work found, out that plan. I found my fiancé on Plenty of Fish. Yep. Plentyoffish.com. <laughs> And yeah, it was like, you know, you have to write this bio and plan what you're going to say and market yourself and, you know, plan on the dates and, you know, I had a lot of screening processes I would put people through. A lot, you know, like, and I was trying to fast track it because I'm like thinking, hey, I'm getting up there. I better fast track this. And, um, you know, so yeah, I was screening. As a matter of fact, um, my fiance, I screened his call while I was driving home from having met someone at a at a local restaurant, you know, and, and had a drink with them, this, they were on their third screening process, and uh, and they passed the first two, but not that one. So, 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 so you were you were speed dating. I was. I was trying literally. to <laughs> literally speed dating, <laughs> driving in the car, and, you know, just have a date. And well, it's like you know, yes. <laughs> potential one, yeah. <laughs> But it worked. Uh, I found a good one. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> on fire here. He's left. Yeah, it. boy. He says one husband at a time. Susan. <laughs> there you go. Looking for ripe guys. I think that's for you, Evie. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even need to do any screening. I got delivered right to the front porch. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Can you elaborate on that? That <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a mail order thing. No, no not, not quite, not quite that. My feisty bad. German bride. Uh, <laughs> I met Pete through work. Actually, my ex-husband and I met Pete through work, already being here in the States, and it was time to get rid of the ex-husband, who also thought he should get rid of me and kick me out of the house. And literally delivered me, as we always say, with the dog in the sink, straight to the front porch of, porch of Pete's. He always had an open door. Six years ago, I would never have said, I'm going to marry Pete. So I'm like, hey, he's kicking me out of the house. Can I move in? I need a place to stay. So about five, six. Five and a half years ago, I literally got delivered to the front porch, moving <laughs> in with the thought of, yeah, hell no, I'm never going to marry that guy. <laughs> a few years down the road, we got married. <laughs> never say never. That's right. We still have to plan your HOA shower and your HOA reception. <laughs> yeah, once, once somebody finally decides to stop with his wanting to oh, draw yeah. attention and going through treatment, so we actually finally can do that. Yep. Dress is ordered. Backyard should be getting done at the end of the year, so next year we can do the HOA reception. There you go. Gotta love it. Here's another comment from Christopher, too. I like this one. I train the seniors, Susan Finch, like SeaWorld. <laughs> <laughs> you go through a lot of fish then. Uh, Chris, 
Christopher Vogelman is a riot. <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> Here we go. I like it. Susan answered, when the circus comes to town, I hide the posters. He knows I'll hunt him down. <laughs> <laughs> you want to explain that one? Oh, I... I... Sometimes, because it gets kind of chaotic around here, um, he's, I am his first marriage and his last, and that, that's an understood thing. He knows, he knows I'm a former you know, teenage stalker. I'm a former very possessive person. I don't share. And so we, that was that understanding. And I, and I have to admit, too, though, before we got together, he wanted me to read because he's watched my other marriage go blah, blah, blah. Um, the Assertive Woman is a book from like the 60s or something. So I would know the difference between being assertive, being aggressive, and we could communicate better. <laughs> and I knew, I thought, this is the guy for me. I mean, this is done. I am so done. And But we tease when we have rough times and I see the posters at the grocery store for the circus. It's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, oh, no, 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 no. We, we will find you because I'll find their website with a schedule and we will find you. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, Mia's starting a new business, and she's put up a thing for it. It goes, hubby FedEx, when it's after <laughs> positively has to get there on time. <laughs> Here we go. Christopher never stops. Give a senior a fish. <laughs> Sheila, oh, who remembers bell-bottom jeans? <laughs> uh. I remember getting my shoot, my... Um, my clunky platform shoes stuck in them sometimes, so you'd trip. Uh -huh. They were just oh. the wrong length, and then you were just down. Yeah. <laughs> if they were too long, the front of your foot yeah. would get stuck in them sometimes. Well, especially when you had yeah. the, those sailor pant things going with the buttons on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> See, they were totally in in the 90s in Germany. Well, <laughs> I, had the, I had the high platforms. I had the bell-bottom jeans. <laughs> all over the place. Thanks God there are no pictures of me. <laughs> oh, somewhere, somehow, there must be pictures. We would love to see them. <laughs> if any of you have those pictures, please send them to. <laughs> that was bad. No, oh, ugly times. There we go. Christopher, this is never good. I mean, it's... <laughs> I'm inter introducing my ex-wife to my first wife. <laughs> oh, no, as his first wife. Oh, as his, as first. His, oh, as his <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no. <laughs> A little bit of both, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, we're having way too much fun here. Oh, yeah, I say Chuck is my going to be my last husband, not my third husband. Right. Um, it makes him feel better. Oh, I, just, I know it. I know myself, and I know him. I, I could not be happier. No, I'm happy too. <laughs> Excited for you. I, I'm I'm an expert at um at planning and marketing well, now. Are we doing a shower for you? Are we doing yes. a shower for you too? That's what I thought. Yes. We're gonna have games and everything. It'll we be can fun. Have, um, yeah, we can have Michael Daniels help us coordinate the games. That sounds fun. <laughs> I actually got some. I got a gift from someone here on Google Plus, um, Dr. Tabby Cushion. She sent me a a wedding um, um, photo frame. Oh, yeah, so that's that's that was very sweet. Sweet. So what? Yes, yeah, Susan and Pandley Laney approves of our husbands. Yes. <laughs> Quite them both. Hey, what about me? She hasn't met yours, has she? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, and I'm not married yet, so. <laughs> no, it can't be Laney approved. Does she, does she have a little rubber stamp or something she uses on her tushy? <laughs> Mia has met Chuck, so. Or at least in a hangout. Okay. Okay. That's a screening process. You bring the yes. whole family in. Let them all, like, fire off questions. That'd be fun. There we go. Uh, David mentioned uh, she always evolved into a Jerry Springer type. He certainly has a lot of time. Yeah, but it's our stories. It's our stories, at least. We're not talking about other people and exploiting them. We're exploiting ourselves. Right. No, no mention of baby mama here or anything. <laughs> we, we are being authentic. Mark's looking for his next ex <laughs> Talking about marketing, Mark is, ma is marketing himself right now. He's looking for his next ex 
Uh, we're just having too much fun here. So, but we're getting close to the end of the show. Yes. Maybe it's a good thing because mm -hmm. we're not even drinking. And uh, I'm going to run down the panel one last time. If you got anything you'd like to talk about or tell us what you're going to be doing, uh, just let us know where we can find you. Christine, anything you'd like to share with us before we leave? Um, circle me here, Christine DeGraff. Um, uh, sign up on circlescope.com for our mailing list so you'll be the first to know when we launch. And we are scheduled for June 17th. June 17th, sounds good. My friend, Larry, anything you'd like to share with us? you got some shows coming up. Yeah, tomorrow, 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, 8 p.m. GMT, which is England, uh, Simply Singapore, Mag um, Aslan Blow will be doing some uh, fried noodles. Ooh. I'm co-hosting with her. Right. And it's on Saturday, this not Sunday, right? Yeah, it's Saturday. Uh, because of the new format I'm, I'm doing with the HOAs, uh, using y YouTube live and live stream. Mm -hmm. So it's going to, that's, the person who's doing the production part, he can do it on Saturdays so and not Sunday. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, make sure we'll watch that. Susan, anything you'd like to share with us? Yep, check out my series with um, Stepan for If I Had a Nickel. So you can check that out. You can also go to artlit.us to start to follow that evolution of our new art project. And my nonprofit, binkypatrol.org, which we make blankets for kids. So if you guys are looking for something to do to get off the screen, go sit outside, make a blanket, give it to a kid in need. That's what I do. And business, susanfinch.com, and plus Susan Finch. Very good. Thank you. And Evie, anything you'd like to share with us here? Definitely sign up for the mailing list with Circloscope. It's well worth it. I love the new layout. Thank you. And just head on over and Circle ask Evie to stay up to date when we finally going to come up with a new show. Sounds good. I'm anxious to see what you come yep. up with, too. Ask Evie. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for coming by today, and it was a great day on Google+. Plus. Uh, I got to spend it with some good friends, and uh, we had a few good laughs here. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.